Today we're driving the all new 2022 Mercedes-Benz EQS 580. This is Mercedes flagship luxury electric sedan. Think electric S-Class, except there are quite a few differences between this and the S-Class. For one, this is a hatchback and uh, it's got some pretty impressive figures. It has a 0.20 drag coefficient. It'll do 340 miles on a single electric charge, at least in this 580 formatic form. And it has 516 horsepower, 611 pound-feet of torque. Zero to 60 happens in about four seconds, maybe a little bit less. Let's walk you around this new EQS 580. We'll show you what it looks like inside and out. We'll talk about what it's been like to live with this week, and we'll give you guys some driving impressions on the road. First, let's start outside. So the first thing to notice is just the shape of this thing. It looks like a fish, and fish are very efficient at cutting through the water. We have a very low and short front overhang. There's actually no frunk in this EQS 5A. That's because they wanted this really low hood line for aerodynamic efficiency. This EQS has 21 inch wheels. We're on winter tires today, so we're gonna get a little bit less mechanical grip out of these, but you can see those look pretty sharp. Many, many spokes. Those are the AMG optional wheels. Pricing for this EQS 580 4Matic starts at $127,000 as spec'd with the Pinnacle package and a few other options that I'll include in the description. This is $138,500. Not cheap. Let's start at the rear of the vehicle and take a look at this lift back. Pop it up by pushing on the Mercedes logo. I like a good lift back blends the best in practicality between an SUV and a sedan. Get a bunch of storage underneath here for a charge cable and what looks like a tire inflation kit. Very nice. Beautiful white cloth back here. You can fold down those rear seats. There's a little privacy screen right here. Look at that slope to the roof. Now, unfortunately, that does impede quite a bit on rear seat Headroom. I'm five foot ten, and my head just barely touches the roof up here. Anyone over six foot, I think, would be uncomfortable. You can adjust these rear seats, but only adjusting them forward increases your headroom because the farther back you go, the more you're inclined to touch this little roof panel. They could have cut out this little piece right here a little bit more and pushed it farther back. We have a nice center console here with a little tablet that ejects, or you can turn that into a center seat. We'll just leave that down for now. I think a pretty attractive looking interior, very simple, very minimal. Mercedes has put a lot of screens in this EQS. They call this the hyper screen. It's supposed to be kind of one flowy integrated screen. It's actually three separate monitors, one for the passenger, one central infotainment system, and then a fully digital gauge cluster. Massive steering wheel, which I think is actually a little bit too big. It kind of blocks part of the central infotainment screen in some situations, especially with Apple CarPlay. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We have a nice looking center console here, very spacious, very big, and just an open airy space. Back seat's a little bit cramped with headroom, but otherwise you can stretch out with your legs. Still though, for a flagship luxury sedan, I would have expected better rear seat comfort in this EQS. And then there's this strange little panel here, which is for the windshield wiper fluid. Since you don't really get access to the front, you just put your wiper fluid in through there and you should be all set. EQS badges everywhere, flush mounted door handles. When the vehicle is locked, those will pull in. I'm not sure I could do that right now with the vehicle on. It looks like I can. All right, nice. So when you approach your EQS, they'll present themselves when you lock the vehicle, they'll go in and not flush. And also when you're driving, they'll probably not flush to increase aerodynamic efficiency. Not a bad looking sedan, a little bit strange in its proportions, but I like how functional this design is. And that 0.20 drag coefficient is very, very impressive. You can see we even have some active grill shutters right here that open and close depending on the need for cooling, I like the integration of this front grill or front piece. Let's hop inside because that's really where most of the excitement is with this new EQS. It's actually turned off on me while I've been outside. That's fine. Love these vents. 
look like jet turbines. So we have a pretty familiar looking steering wheel. This is taken straight from the S-Class and some other Mercedes vehicles. Like I said earlier, I think it's a little bit too big. I would like to see this shrunken down just a little bit. It's taking up about an eighth of the screen here. Um, there's a pretty good two or three inches that I can't see on the central display. And then when you go into CarPlay, it actually blocks your view of your side panel right here, which is a little bit irritating, but a minor inconvenience. You can just kind of tilt over and take a look at things. Our central gauge cluster has lots of different views. This isn't a 3D gauge cluster like we had in the S-Class, but we still have an augmented reality head-up display, which will show you turn-by-turn -turn directions and various other things through the navigation. You have the options between a sport display, which looks like a, I don't know, something out of a sci-fi movie. Understated display, which is very minimal and the classic display, which is what I've been using this week. These steering wheel controls seem to work well enough. There is a control over here on the right to kind of play around with your infotainment, though it doesn't work as well as I would like. There's no touchpad anymore. This is purely just a touch screen. And uh, I actually quite like it. I like it a little bit more than the vertical slab that we saw in the S-Class, and that slab also carries over to the base model of this EQS. A little bit more minimal menus, uh, they've simplified things here. I came into this vehicle thinking, I'm not going to like all these screens. They've gotten rid of most of the physical controls, and I could do with a few more physical buttons. But for the most part this week, it's been okay to live with. Your home screen just kind of defaults to navigation, and you can set this to show you the satellite view or a daytime view. I've got this set on the nighttime view because it's a little bit less distracting, less bright. And then you've got this home display with a bunch of quick access controls. You have quick access buttons for vehicle settings. You can turn on various systems, and then you can go into more detail in menus here if you so desire. Quick access control for our parking sensors and 360 cam. One neat feature is there is a fingerprint scanner that will basically just load your user profile and set all of your settings to however you've preferenced them in this EQS. In the middle here, we've got cup holders, wireless charging, two USB-C ports. Lots of USB-C ports all around this EQS. Nice looking panoramic sunroof. Very comfortable back headrest cushions. All of our seat adjustments are on the left side like in any Mercedes Benz. One weird ergonomic thing is whenever I open this door, I hit my hand hits the lock button. Um, so that's a bit strange. Hopefully that doesn't cause any issues with being locked out of the car. It hasn't for me this week, but it's just something that I've noticed. You can also push it with your arm, but it is a bit of a strange spot. Climate controls are pretty easy. You get a climate menu that you can just tap on right there and go into a little bit more detail. You can control the second row, air quality, uh, pre-entry climate control, lots of neat adjustability there. We also get this passenger display to the right here. You can load your own profile, and you have various controls for, you can see the state of charge, air quality, go back home and control pretty much everything in the infotainment. You can see information displays like energy flow, change your comfort settings for massage, seat ambient lighting. I mean, you pretty much have everything in here that you would in the central display. It's just right in front of you. All right, I don't want to spend too much time stationary in this EQS, so let's take this for a drive and we'll discuss anything else that I may have forgotten on the road and we'll give you some driving impressions. The steering wheel mounted gear selector and you can feel that 10 degrees of rear wheel steer immediately at low speeds. This has a really tight turning circle, very impressive. <laughs> Steering is light, and it's surprisingly nimble and agile at low speed. It's a bit disconcerting at first just because you kind of have to get used to that really, really tight ratio with that added 10 degrees of rear axle steering. For the most part, it drives like many other electric vehicles. It's very quiet, very serene. 
We have adaptive adjustable air suspension and this EQS 580. It's pretty smooth too. We get a few creaks, shakes, and rattles from the back hatch area. I do have one major complaint about this dynamically though, and that is the brake pedal. A lot of other people have touched on this, and the best word I can use to describe it is unnerving. It's kind of sketchy, especially for the amount of power that this car has. Every time I push the brake pedal, I'm not really sure how much braking force I'm gonna get out of it, it feels like there's just a bunch of air bubbles in a braking system, or you've been on track all day and you're hitting brake fade. It's a weird sensation. And I'm kind of surprised that something like this made it into production in this EQS 580 because it's just not tuned very well at all. It's my biggest complaint about this car. And uh, I kind of feel like I'm back in the mid 2000s with hybrid brake pedal tuning again. It's very strange. There's a weird resistance to it. It feels kind of mushy and crunchy. It almost feels like you're getting into ABS at normal driving speeds. Very strange. And it gets even stranger when you enable the strong recuperation with the paddle shifters, basically one pedal drive. The brake pedal will actually lower when you slow down and it's never in the same place because it's moving according to how much regenerative braking is happening. I don't like it, it's weird. I still haven't gotten used to it after driving this for a few days. And uh, I think it's something that Mercedes definitely needs to improve upon and fix in their electric vehicles going forward. We do get three different modes for regenerative braking, strong recuperation, normal recuperation and no recuperation and those are all controlled with the paddle shifters strong recuperation is one of my preferred drive modes just because i'm pressing that brake pedal less and less though with normal recuperation it's more of a consistent driving experience i can kind of predict what type of brake pressure i need all right so rant over on that we do have a few different drive modes sport comfort eco and individual they all do just about what you'd expect them to. Let's go into sport mode and we'll accelerate onto the highway. We're not lacking for power in this EQS 580. Honestly, I'd probably be happy with what the base model offers. This thing is properly quick. And it offers an impressively good steering assist system. There are probably a couple of infrared sensors flashing away there in the dashboard, tracking our eye movement for both the head-up display and our lane guidance. We have automatic lane changing. You can skip five mile an hour increments very easily. This is a really nice system, I'm very impressed keeps good distance with vehicles in front of you. The controls are easily laid out and discernible from each other. It all works very seamlessly and takes a bit of the stress out of driving and using this display to change functionality in the car. You can turn everything off very easily at a moment's notice just by pressing the cancel button and take control. back into comfort mode for a little bit added ride comfort. The focus here, like I said at the beginning of the video, is heavily on efficiency and that carries through in the driving experience. This isn't a very good car to hustle around. It doesn't feel like it wants to corner quickly even with that rear wheel steer. Granted we are on winter tires today so that's going to affect things but I don't have a lot of confidence in this car's ability to corner quickly or drive fast and a lot of that is down to the braking system a lot of that is down to the suspension tuning it's a softer suspension setup it's very comfortable but uh, at the same time it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence around corners we'll test some of that here in a minute one interesting note in eco mode your dead pedal rises up. So it only gives you minimal amount of pedal travel before it kind of gives you a 
a small resistance point. And then you can push past that resistance point for more acceleration, but it trains you to only give this EQS a light acceleration to save on battery range. So this is flat out kind of in eco mode. I can push past it if I want to, but it keeps you from doing anything too spirited with that right pedal. We're gonna turn that off though, because it just kind of feels weird. And again, we have 340 miles of range, very little range anxiety in this EQS. Seats are comfortable, at least up front. Back seats are a little hard, a little bit too high, fortunately. Very impressed with acceleration and straight line performance here. It's very quiet on the highway, no surprises there. There are some things that this EQS excels at. I'm very impressed with this driving system. It's keeping me perfectly centered between the lines. The lane changes are seamless. It's very easy to engage. It works great. This is one of the better level two driving systems that I've used. Um, it does prompt you to put your hands back on the wheel every now and then, about maybe every 40 seconds to a minute. The S-Class had a very irritating system that was always prompting me to put my hands on the wheel. I, that hasn't happened at all in this EQS. This is a big improvement from the S-Class in that regard. It's very quiet in here. The powertrain, I think, really lends itself well to a luxury vehicle. There are a couple of gimmicky electric motor sounds that this EQS can make. Let's go into our settings menu here. We can turn on sound experience. be able to hear something here. Wow. <laughs> There's a couple different versions of that. That was Vivid Flux. This is Silver Waves. Good effort, Mercedes, but it's a bit weird. All right, we're still in sport mode here. Let's see how this handles. Sketchy brakes. Winter tires are limiting us today. I'm sure on a set of all seasons or summer-oriented performance tires, this would handle much better. You can feel the rear wheel steer system working to kind of get us rotated around the corner, but but still, the focus here is on comfort, softness, quietness. Let's do a quick zero to 60. And let's do a quick 60 to zero. Ah, oh, just the worst. All right, one more. No slouch. Oh wow, look at that. Nice. It's fun. <laughs> but also a little bit of a surprise. Okay, so some final thoughts on the EQS 580. Bit of a mixed bag. Some things that I really like about this car. 
I love the steering assist. I love driving this on the highway. You get 200 kilowatts of DC fast charging out of this. So you can charge this from 10 to 80% in about 35 minutes, which is pretty impressive considering this has, I believe it's a 107 kilowatt hour battery pack. It's, it's massive. It can charge in your garage at home pretty quickly too, about 11 hours, 15 minutes or something along those lines from 10%, which is pretty good. If you have level two charging, uh, you can charge this up overnight with ease and start your day fresh with 340 miles of range. And that seems like a pretty accurate range estimate too, according to my driving and the readout today. You have a kind of a low range, a max range, depending on your driving style. And that'll adjust down here with this meter. It's very quiet, it's very comfortable, it's very luxurious in the front seat. Back seats are a big disappointment for me. The seats are kind of hard, there's not enough headroom. Um, yeah, that's not where you necessarily want to be. Fine for the kids, but putting any adults back there could be honestly kind of embarrassing in your $130,000 EQS. I do like this hyper screen. That's kind of a surprise to me this week, a bit of a shock. I wasn't expecting to warm up to this infotainment because there's just zero physical controls to it. There are a few quick access buttons, which are nice, but once you have this set up and figured out, you can kind of leave it alone and just, it integrates into the rest of the car very nicely. The steering wheel is a bit too big for my preferences. It blocks some of the screen. That's a bit of an annoyance. It would be nice to get a slightly smaller steering wheel in this car. I feel like that would make this feel a bit less cumbersome and lumbering down the road to it. Like, just tighten up some of the response and just overall driving engagement with this EQS. I would like Mercedes-Benz to refine this car a little bit. I think the suspension needs a bit more refinement. One of the strangest brake pedals I think I've ever touched. I also drove a uh, 1980s Yugo once and this kind of reminds me of that. Not a comparison I was expecting to make with a Mercedes-Benz ever, but unfortunately, um, I'm not the only one who's complained about this braking system. Hopefully Mercedes will address that and uh, make some tweaks in the future. And overall, it's been nice spending the week in this. I'm excited to see what some of their newer electric models uh, come up with in terms of refinement and maybe improvements upon what we haven't liked in this EQS so far this week. That said, if Mercedes is wanting to remain competitive in the EV space, they need to do a little bit better. There are a lot of other options at this price point and beyond and below that drive better. This maybe offers a little bit more tech, a little bit more range, a little bit more comfort than some of the competitors, but overall as a package, I feel like it falls a bit short. Okay, all right guys, that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching. That's been a drive in the new 2022 Mercedes-Benz EQS 580.